In Creo Parametric, you can perform computational fluid dynamics or CFD to simulate the flow of liquids or gases around the exterior of an object using the real-time simulation capabilities in Creo Simulation Live. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a wing that I created in another video using some C141 point data courtesy of the University of Illinois. And I want to analyze, again, the fluid flow around this. So to do that, let's go over to Live Simulation. And I don't need to see my datum planes. When my libraries are loaded, I will turn those off. Right now, we have a structure simulation, the default simulation in here. Click on the plus sign in order to add a fluid simulation study. And it's automatically made active. The first thing that you need to do is to define the fluid domain. If I go to the drop down list, you can do an internal volume. But in this particular situation, I want to do the enclosure volume. I want to have a solid or actually a volume around my solid in order to simulate the flow of air. And when I click on the icon, it automatically creates a bounding box around the model that just fits the entire model inside of it. And you can adjust the offsets and you can even rotate it. So for example, maybe I want to add some depth to the front and to the sides. I can double click on the numbers in here and change all the ones. I'm just going to use value of 10 around all of them. Might be easier to just do it in the dashboard going from field to field. And that way, I'm just creating a box that's slightly bigger than the model so I can have the fluid flowing around it. This is good. I will hit the check mark. I, well, let's expand the tree for the fluid study. Here you can see the fluid domain. Now that the volume has been defined, I need to say what kind of material is flowing around it. So you can right click on the fluid domain and then choose edit materials. And there are six different materials that come automatically in Creo Parametric 7.0. This is going to be for air. So I will right click on it and choose add to model. Then click OK out of the materials dialog box. Let's deselect everything. If I expand the junction box next to the fluid domain, there you see the material that is assigned. All right, so far so good. Now we need to define our boundary conditions for the fluid. The first one I'm going to use will be the flow velocity. And for the flow velocity, it wants to know what surface we want to have the flow enter on. I'm going to pick the front surface of the enclosure for the front of the wing. And you can define the flow either by the magnitude and direction or the directional components. I will leave magnitude and direction. And for the direction, you can also change what coordinate system that you're using to define it. But I'm happy with the one that I've got. And taking a look at the reference coordinate system here and also on the screen, I want it going in the positive Z direction. So I'm going to use a value of 1 in the Z direction. For the magnitude of this, right now it's in units of inches per second. I'm going to change this to feet per second. Right before this, I jumped into MathCAD to figure out what would correspond to 100 miles an hour. Well, for that magnitude, I'm going to use 146.667. And then I will click the OK button. All right, the next part of the boundary condition to define, the outlet pressure. In other words, where is the fluid going to flow out of? And I'm going to hover my mouse over here, tap the right mouse button in order to query select the back surface, and it's going to be zero. Again, you can change to a different set of units if you want to. Then we will click the OK button. And the third boundary condition that we need to define is something called slip symmetry. Slip symmetry defines the surfaces in the enclosure volume that the fluid can flow past. So I'll choose 
slip symmetry. I'm going to tap the right mouse button to get that surface over there. And then I'm going to hold down the control key, tap right to get the bottom surface. And then select this surface, still holding down control, and then this surface. So essentially I'm getting the surfaces around the wing for slip symmetry. Then I will click the OK button. And that is everything that we need to define in order to run the simulation. To start the simulation, actually before I click on the simulate icon, I'm going to go to the study drop down menu. Here we have performance options. And right now it's biased towards speed. I like that. I'm going to bias it even more towards speed over accuracy for the sake of this demonstration. Now I can use the icon in the in graphics toolbar to turn the simulation on. Right now it is calculating and it gives you the results initially using a cut plane. And the cut plane you can see is going right through the side of the model. I actually want my cut plane to be more in the direction of flow to see how the fluids interact around the wing. So to change the position of the cut plane, go to the selection filter in the lower right hand corner and change from the default geometry to fluid objects. I still have this warning message coming on. Let me close that little dialog box. And with this set to fluid objects, now you'll be able to select the cut plane and you're going to get a 3D dragger that will allow you to manipulate it. So if I want to rotate it, I'll just drag it around over here. And if I don't get exactly right, hey, you can double click on the dimension in the computer screen and type in the value that you want it to use. And similarly, you could translate it as well as rotate it. But this is good. Let me then deselect everything and just position a little bit more over here. And now you can see right now it's showing us the velocity in our results. If you go to the drop down list, you could choose pressure instead. And here you can see the pressure differential. There's also temperature in here, but I don't have anything changing in terms of temperature. But here's an interesting one. We can take a look at the vortices in this particular case, and you can see where we're getting some changes in the vortex. I don't know what this lambda 2 is, but again, it's another thing that you can calculate. And when you're doing the velocity, you can change the set of units. So for example, maybe I want to do feet per second instead, and that adjusts the scale. And you can choose which component of the velocity that you're interested in. And of course, you can change the color bands and other information around here. So right now, it is showing us the results. It's continuing on with the calculation. If you know that you're going to achieve steady state, you might want to just set a time limit on it. And here we have show results. I'm going to unclick that to show you that you can also display streamlines. I'll go to show the streamlines and we can see the streamlines for this particular area over here. So that's kind of neat. Let's turn off the streamlines and go to show the particles. And wow, look at all those particles go inside of there. That one looks really neat. That's I really like the particles because again, it's like it, you're in a wind tunnel here seeing how your wind is going around your airfoil. So that's pretty cool. Let's uh, turn the particles back off. Let's go to our cut plane again. And let's pick on our cut plane. And this time I'm going to translate it. Let me make sure I get the translation arrow. And so there you can see the results change along the length of the wing. And again, this is real-time simulation. So if I were to make changes to the geometry, it would update the results as I'm working. So there you see an example of using computational fluid dynamics for simulating the flow of fluids around the exterior of an object. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, 
please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.